Welcome to worship with us today. Please know that whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here at First Congregational United Church of Christ in Madison, Wisconsin. We are delighted that you joined us this morning, either here in the sanctuary or by live stream. We ask that you remain seated throughout worship. During hymns, please enjoy our soloist. Humming is permissible and encouraged, especially if you're willing to use harmony. The ushers will release the congregation by rows after worship. The worship leaders use masks in accordance with the Dane County Public Health mask mandate. Today we also celebrate the Sacrament of Communion. If you did not bring your own elements or forgot, there are individual packages of juice and wafer at each entrance. First pull back the top for the wafer and then the second pull back is for the juice. Let us now enter our time of worship together. Please join in the call to worship found on the screen. By God's grace, we are who we are. People who are called, but afraid to follow. By God's grace, we are who we are. People who are called and gifted with courage. By God's grace, we are who we are. People who are called and given good news to share. When we offer the peace of God to one another, we are saying that we believe God's peace can grow in us 
and take us to new places of wholeness and service. Let us offer that now to each other with these words. May the peace of God be with us all. Please offer a wave to your neighbors as a sign of peace. Please join me in our unison prayer. God, we have worked all day and night. We yearned for a big catch, a full church, an abundant feast. But we are tired, and our nets have not returned enough. We need rest, but you call us to return again to the lake. We are weary but you promise us rest. We are afraid, but you call us to dive into deep waters and take a risk. We sometimes doubt, but you continue to reach out with forgiveness and love. Grant us grace that we may proclaim your word, work for your kingdom, and trust your promises. Amen. Hello, everybody, and welcome. It's so great to have you here. All right, so today I want to introduce you to somebody. I want to introduce, maybe you know this person already, or maybe you've seen this person around, okay? So here is the person, okay? How many, yeah, it looks like a lot of hands are up. Everybody knows who this person is, pretty much everybody. And what, okay, you're shouting out his name already. I hear that. What is this person's name? Well, of course, it's Waldo. That's Waldo. All right, so what, what is something you do with Waldo? <laughs> okay, yep, you look for Waldo. That's basically what you do you look for Waldo. All right, I'm gonna put up a picture. And I thought since it's a chilly day, it might be cool to go out to the beach a little bit and look for Waldo. So you look on there and see if you can find Waldo while we're talking. So why, why are we looking for Waldo? What is the deal? Okay, and why is it so hard to find Waldo on these pictures? Well, yes, it's because there's so much happening. 
there's all kinds of people moving around and there's things happening and stuff is blown around and, and stuff is washing up on the shore. There's just so much happening. It's sometimes really, really hard to find Waldo. And that's the whole point, right? You're looking for Waldo. But okay, so now we're looking for Waldo. And what is something we always know in the um, Where's Waldo books? What is something we always know on every page that we turn to in a Where's Waldo book? What is something we know? Okay, and that answer to that question is, we know that Waldo is somewhere in that picture. Waldo is always there in the picture, okay, while we're looking. Sometimes it's really hard to find them, but we know that somewhere in that picture, in the craziness of life, in the busyness of that photo or that picture, we know that Waldo is there. Now, okay, so the same holds true with this guy by the name of Jesus. Jesus, right. Today's scripture talks about how the disciples were, they like were given up on fishing because nothing was happening and, and the crowd was pushing in and, and Jesus said, you know, can you help me out? Let's go out into your boat and let's go fishing. And the, these fishermen were saying like, no, because we haven't caught anything all day. And he said, let's go try it. So in the busyness of their lives, they go out to go fishing because this guy by the name of Jesus says, give it a try. And that's what they do. And they caught all those fish. So where was Jesus before? Where was Jesus before for these fishermen? And the thing is that Jesus is always there. Like Waldo, Jesus is always there. It's just that sometimes in our busy lives, in our crowded lives, we we're dealing with a lot of different people and a lot of different things are happening. And we don't always see Jesus. But we can always remember, like Waldo, Jesus is always there. All right, let's pray. Loving and ever-present God, thank you for sending us Jesus who taught us so much about you and about loving each other. In our busy lives, help us to remember Jesus is always there. Amen. All right, we'll see you next time. Take care. Our reading today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, starting at the first verse. One day, as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the Word of God. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. And this time their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boat, and soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. 
When Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, Oh God, please leave me. I am such a sinful man. For he was awestruck by the number of fish they had caught, as were the others with him. His partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also amazed. Jesus replied to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for people. And as soon as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus. Let us pray. May the words that come from all of our mouths and the meditation that lives deep in all of our hearts always be acceptable to you, our Creator, Redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Have you ever had one of those days? You know, the kind where you worked hard and have done everything you thought was possible, only to find that it seems all of your energy resulted in nothing. Maybe people around you couldn't see or understand your vision. Perhaps people were more interested in challenging you than working with you. Or maybe no one else was involved, but nothing was working the way you had planned. On those days, you really just want to call it a day, get some rest, and hope for a better tomorrow. I think we see a similar response in our reading from the Gospel of Luke. New Testament professor Elizabeth Johnson writes, Simon had been out fishing all night with no success, then working from the early morning hours cleaning his nets. Most likely he was exhausted and looking forward to going home and getting some sleep. So it must have seemed a bit of an imposition when Jesus got into Simon's boat and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Nevertheless, Simon did what Jesus asked. In Luke's gospel, this is not Simon's first encounter with Jesus. Jesus has already been to Simon's home in Capernaum and has healed his mother-in-law. Perhaps that explains Simon's willingness to let Jesus use his fishing boat as a floating pulpit. Luke does not tell us what Jesus taught the crowds that morning. The focus is on what follows. Jesus tells Simon to put out into the deep water and let down his nets for a catch. Simon obviously believes this will be a futile exercise. He is the professional fisherman, after all. We can almost hear his exasperation in his voice when he responds, Master, we have worked all night, but have caught nothing. But then he continues, Yet, if you say so, I will let down the nets. We know what happens next. Nets so full of fish that they begin to break. Boats so full of fish they begin to sink. Simon is caught by surprise. In the midst of his ordinary daily grind, and in fact, after a particularly lousy night at work, he is encountered by one who changes everything. This story from Luke is often referenced as a call story. Although this story is much different than the call stories we hear in the other Gospels. In the other stories, Jesus walks along the Sea of Galilee and simply calls Simon, Andrew, James, and John to follow him. In this story, we might say Jesus comes on the job. He sits in the boat out in the lake. He encourages those fishing to try again. Jesus goes to their workplace 
supports the work they are doing and encourages them in their work. It doesn't ever call them. They are so moved by him, they want to follow him. I couldn't help thinking, as I read this story, how I might respond if Jesus showed up at my office here at church. How would I respond? Especially after a long day that hadn't quite gone as I planned. Of course, I would be oh so welcoming to this teacher who was trying to tell me what to do and how to do it. Well, maybe not. But do we even consider that Jesus our God might come to us wherever we are, in our workplace, at the grocery store, in the middle of a test at school, when we are at the end of our rope in parenting, when caregiving has reached a crisis, when we are at a family gathering or celebration, when we are in the emergency room, or when we are sitting at the stoplight in traffic. Is this something we consider? Or do we only expect to encounter God when we intentionally come to worship on Sunday morning? Jesuit priest James Martin, in an article in the Washington Post, wrote, God meets you where you are, is a saying we heard often in my Jesuit novitiate because it was beloved by the assistant Novus director. God meets you where you are. David Donovan, a marvelous Jesuit, used to say, Father Donovan used to say that expression over and over again in both conversation and homilies. In a nutshell, the popular saying means two things. First, God doesn't expect us to be perfect before we can approach God or before God approaches us. Your spiritual house doesn't have to be perfectly in order for God to enter. And second, God meets you in ways that you can understand and appreciate. If you are scholarly or more introverted, for example, you may meet God by being inspired by a book you read. If you're a more social person, you may meet God in a group setting. If you're someone who loves nature, you may meet God by the seashore. God meets you as you are, where you are, and in ways that you can understand. This is exactly what happens in the story we read today. Before Jesus could call Peter, he had to journey from Nazareth to Capernaum, the town where Peter lived and worked, a distance of 40 miles. Jesus went to his home and to his place of work by the shore of the Sea of Galilee. Jesus meets Simon Peter where he is, as he is. Jesus' miracle that day was also in Peter's own language, as it were. The miracle wasn't bringing someone back to life or even changing water into wine, miracles he would perform elsewhere. Instead, Jesus focused on fish. And if there's one thing Peter was an expert in, it was fish. Jesus was again meeting him where he was. This story reminds us both personally and as a church that we need to be aware of God's presence in our everyday lives. On those days of exasperation, when we would like to throw in the towel and just go to bed, God may be standing 
right in front of us, telling us to take a risk, to go out yet again and drop the nets. On those days, I can at least say from my personal experience, I would be the one rolling my eyes at Jesus, asking me to go out and drop the nets again. But maybe that's just what I need, a little nudge to stay the course. If and when I am willing to stay the course, I have indeed seen examples of a different outcome. One of the things that lifts me on my down and out and tired days is music. When I put on jazz music, it takes me to a different place. It allows me to quiet myself, to let the music calm me or energize me. Or I go to the keyboard and let my fingers distract me long enough to then be able to return to what I was doing with new insight. So I think God is in the music. Maybe, like Jesuit priest Martin said, you may meet God by being inspired by a book you read. If you're a more social person, you may meet God in a group setting. If you're someone who loves nature, you may meet God by the seashore. We also need to remember that we have the opportunity to live these words. God meets you where you are as a church. We say every Sunday, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. But do we mean those words and are we true to those words when it's not a good day? Peter could have pulled his boat ashore, tied it up, and headed home. But the presence of Jesus helped him stay the course. And in staying the course, he was changed in that moment. Now, we do know that he didn't stay on course later, but he's human. And that doesn't mean that God will not meet him again where he is. God meets us where we are, but never leaves us where we were. God invites us into a different space, a space where God can provide love, forgiveness, and offer grace. Where has God met you recently? Was it at home, in the grocery store, on a walk? at work, or at the doctor's office? What did God offer to you in the midst of pain, frustration, joy, celebration, or grief? How might that have changed you or how we think about God? Amen. You walk along our 
Who will come to this table to celebrate care in illness, comfort in sorrow, healing beyond curing, peace in forgiveness, hope in times of fear or threat? Who will come to this table having abundance, as culture defines it or your heart knows it? and because you have discovered your own generosity and need to start giving. Who will come to this table, willing to be welcomed, even when that is awkward, willing to be served, not a server or planner of the menu, and willing to welcome anybody, anybody, anybody who sits beside you, willing to offer welcome, even expecting it to be rejected, and, if it is, offer again. Here we are. We come with our regrets and dreams of angels, with our healed lips and lives. Jesus of Nazareth came to the lake shore borrowed a boat and reached out to people by offering words to remember and food to eat. The words called them to follow, and the food was from deep places. Jesus comes still to stormy waters and food deserts to borrow the leaky rowboat we wish were more like a cruise ship that we call the church and use it to offer words that change human lives and sustenance that saves them. We remember that Jesus knew when it was the last Passover that only a few words were needed and the simplest meal prepared. Jesus blessed, broke and shared the bread and whispered for you. Jesus blessed, poured, and shared the juice, and whispered for you. Let us pray together. Gentle host, rest upon us as you rested upon wave and deep. Speak into our lives a word made flesh. Send your spirit of life and love, power and blessing upon your children, that this bread may be broken and gathered in love, and this cup poured out to give hope to all. Risen Christ, live in us that we may live in you. Breathe in us that we may breathe in you. Amen. Let us join as one, though we are in many places, and receive the gift of God, the bread of heaven. We are one in Christ, in the bread we share. Let us with our many needs and many blessings receive the gift of God, the cup of blessing. We are one in Christ, in the cup we share. Let us pray. Spirit of Christ, we give thanks for this grace 
from our long and deep heritage of sanctuary Eucharist and shelter meals, fish fry picnics and ivy dripping from a pole, and from our personal memories of words that have been generous, brave, helpful, holy. Wrap your gentle presence around all whose bodies, spirits, and hearts need healing or strength. Receive each of our personal commitments to go forth for you and also borrow from this community of faith the ways to row out to all your children in the world. We join our voices together in our common prayer saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Each day when we greet the day, we wonder what the day will hold for us. Will it be a good day, a challenging day, or just an ordinary day? On those days when we are able to recognize God's presence, we are also able to see the abundance of gifts we have been given. At that moment, it is with gratitude that we are able to give ourselves. Gifts can be made via the website, through Realm, by mail, or left in the black boxes near the exits. dedicate our gifts. God of great gifts, we give thanks for all the ways you meet us where we are and sustain us for life. We pray that these gifts will provide what is needed to move people to the fullness of life you desire for all. In that spirit, we joyfully present our gifts. Amen.
God meets us where we are. Whether it is when we are fishing, doing our daily work, playing with friends, or under hospice. But God never leaves us where we are. God invites us to life centered on loving God and neighbor. We will have to take risks and go deeper than we had planned. It was Simon's choice to follow. The choice is also ours. Go in peace. Amen.